Hello everyone, I'm Govi and uh, here is the review of Nubia N1. Now this handset is available in India for a price tag of Rs 11,999 and this is another handset that comes with a 5000 mAh non-removable battery. Build quality and the finishing is very good. It has got a metallic body. This is the gold color version. It looks almost similar to the Redmi Note 4. And yes, it does come with a fingerprint sensor on the back plus dedicated buttons on the front. This handset sports a 5.5 inch screen with a full HD resolution, color reproduction, viewing angles and the touch response are very good. And uh, the screen is using a 2.5D curved glass as you can see here. The unique thing about the Nubia N1 is this light here at the bottom that also doubles up as the home button. And this is also the notification light. The power button volume rocker is on the left side, fingerprint sensor on the back, 13 megapixel camera, LED flash. On the top, you will find a secondary mic, audio jack, and at the bottom, there are dual vents on the bottom side. This is the speaker out vent, USB Type-C port, primary microphone, and this is an extra vent. The SIM tray is on the left side. This handset is using a hybrid slot. You can use a nano SIM and a nano SIM or a nano SIM and a micro SD card. As you can see, I'm using the Reliance Geo SIM. Voice over LTE is supported. It works. This is how the box pack looks and inside you'll find the Nubia N1 with a 5000 mAh non-removable battery, user manual warranty card. You also get a SIM tray ejector pin, USB Type-C cable, and the final content is the travel charger. This is 5 volts, 2 amp. The handset is heavy because of the 5000 mAh non-removable battery. Weight is 190 grams. The fingerprint sensor on the back is decently fast and accurate. The Nubia N1 is powered by MediaTek Helio P10 64-bit octa-core processor coupled with the Mali T860 GPU. It is running Marshmallow out of the box and there are good number of sensors. There is accelerometer, magnetic, proximity, gyro and hall sensors. This handset is running a customized UI, the Nubia UI 4.0. N1 comes with 32GB of internal storage space and 3GB RAM. There is the edge gesture option. Now let me enable this part here and uh, when I swipe on both the edges I can increase the brightness. So this kind of a feature is available on the N1 smartphone. If you go to the settings and in settings go to the display option there is the breath light option. You can use that to control the brightness intensity of this light, the circular light at the bottom that also acts as the notification light. So you can increase the intensity or decrease it as you want. This handset supports screen split up and it is enabled by default. Now just go to the home screen and swipe from bottom to top this way and you'll get two screens there. And the best part is you can run an application on one screen and a different application on the other screen. So you can use two applications simultaneously and also adjust the window size as per your need. Another unique thing is the dual instance. Now this will allow you to use for example you can have two WhatsApp account and run those accounts on this handset on a single handset. Here is the camera interface. There are a lot of options available including HDR. Now rear camera can shoot in 13 megapixel resolution and the front camera can shoot in 13 megapixel resolution. As you can see there are a lot of camera options available here. The camera quality is average. It does take very good shots in decent lighting conditions but in low light conditions the quality is not at all impressive. When I say it's an average camera it means that when you're viewing the images on your uh, smartphone it will look very good but when you're trying to view the images on the PC it's not going to look that great. Here are some of the images I shot. This is from the front camera and this is from the rear camera. Now, as I said, the camera quality is average. Low light is not really that great, 
but uh, if you switch to manual mode the quality gets even better i'm recording this video in full hd resolution this handset can record full hd video and uh, this is the sample full hd i recorded this one is with a stabilizer so video quality is very good no issues about that focusing is also pretty fast Slow motion videos did not work. I was able to sh shoot slow motion videos on the smartphone but when I was trying to play that file on my desktop or a laptop, it did not work. Slow motion video quality is okay, not really that great. I'm now going to run some benchmark application. Let's check out the battery temperature. It is at 34 degrees. The quadrant benchmark score is 22196. This is the anti to score 46119 and the 3D score is 6072 Nina Mark 2 is at 58.7 FPS and this handset supports 10 point multi-touch the battery temperature is under control 37 degrees I'm now going to play the modern combat 5 game and uh, this part here will give you a better idea how the hardware performs watch closely the gameplay was smooth but uh, the handset did lag and you'll notice it sometime now there did you notice that the handset is lagging though the game is playable but uh, at higher levels the lags will increase the next game that i'm going to try is the asphalt 8 and it will give us a better idea about how the hardware will perform Okay, here is the Asphalt 8 and it is set to the high visual quality mode and let's start and clearly lagging. So hardware is not that powerful. I'm going to switch this game to medium visual quality mode and in this mode the game played very well as you can see. I have good control on the car. So this MediaTek Helio P1064 bit octa core processor is powerful but uh, it cannot play many high end games in high quality mode but you should be able to play those games in medium or low quality mode overall the performance of this handset is pretty good i am running two sim cards geo as well as atel and uh, both of these sim cards are working fine there is no issues with the network even the internal mic that's the in call mic is working pretty fine I did not face any issues as of now. The camera quality as already mentioned is average but uh, if you are using the professional mode and if you key in the right variables you can get some really good shots. But if you are using the auto mode the performance will not be that impressive. Coming to the battery performance the handset does heat up maximum battery temperature I encountered while I was shooting the photos and videos under direct sunlight was 44 degrees and when playing this game you will also notice that the battery temperature did increase as long as the battery temperature is under 48 degrees and uh, the handset does not heat up when it is not being used that's when it is idle it does not heat up there is no issue do note it is normal for a handset to heat up when you're using it to its full potential for example like playing this game after 20 minutes the battery temperature increased to 41 degrees it took me two hours to charge this handset from 20 percent to 100 percent and on a full charge you can expect 6 to 18 hours of non-stop moderate to heavy usage which means that with mixed usage the handset will easily last for up to two days i found two issues on this handset sometimes i felt that the ui was a bit slow that's the first issue and the second issue was the auto brightness mode the brightness level is quite dull even when you try to adjust it it comes back to the same dull level and sometimes you can actually see the transition from a more brighter screen to a less brighter screen the nubia n1 is a good handset for a decent price tag of 11,999 but when you compare it with the Redmi Note 4, the Redmi Note 4 is definitely better.